Hey, what's up? For today's video, we're going to interview Brian Truong, who works at Microsoft and also did the OMSES program. So let's get started. All right. Well, thanks, Brian, for joining the channel. So I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So um, I also work for Microsoft, I guess, which, <laughs> as you know, um, but basically I'm a software engineer and I work on Microsoft's HPC slash AI team, which is under the Azure core umbrella, but basically that, that basically means the HPC and AI team is responsible for, uh, I guess the hardware that goes behind what are traditionally used for like HPC and AI workloads. So the name kind of sounds like we are, are, we are the ones doing the AI work, but it's more so we are managing like the the hardware, so specifically it's nodes that have GPUs. That's generally what is like used to determine if it's like an HPC node or a normal compute node. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I do for work right now, I guess going back in time, I'm kind of starting from current to mm -hmm. older, I guess. Um, so I did the Georgia Tech online masters, which as, yeah. as you know, I guess, is, <laughs> which is kind of how we connected. So I finished that last May. And it took me like two and a half years. Um, and I've been at Microsoft for two years. And then uh, I was working as a software engineer at IBM prior to that. And then mm -hmm. I did my undergrad at UNC Chapel Hill. And mm -hmm. I guess that about covers it. I guess let me know if, if awesome. you want more details on anything. No, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So you worked at IBM before Microsoft. And it seems like you transitioned jobs while doing the OMSES. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So I was working the whole time. Uh, but once I switched to Microsoft, I was over halfway through with the master's. And at that point, I kind of started taking easier classes with the exception of like grad algorithms, which I guess you kind of <laughs> have to take late. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And you did the machine learning specialization, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Okay, cool. So um, what got you interested in OMSES to start? So... I'm not going to lie, I feel like I was, I was excited to join the workforce, I guess, when I was an under, like a senior in undergrad, but I was not particularly excited, I guess, about the full-time role going, that uh, the team I was joining at IBM. Mm -hmm. It was just a normal full stack dev role um, for like an internal web app. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to do the master's to learn more about machine learning, basically, because in undergrad, I took an AI course. Um, but I never did an ML course and the AI course was pretty, is it, it was very AI and not machine learning. So it was like Bayes, Nets and stuff like that. Yeah, so it didn't true. really, it didn't do any of like the more, more modern, like ML like stuff. Neural networks or like deep yeah. learning. Kind of thing. Yeah. And I still don't, I still don't know like that much about that area yeah, of machine learning, crazy. which, which I would like to, but it's hard, I guess. Once you graduate, I feel like. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's hard to make yourself do stuff like that. All right. No, really, though. That actually brings us to my next question. Like, what was working full time like while doing the OMS? Yes. Uh, for the most part, I think like people make jokes about like uh, you can just like say goodbye to your social life, which is like <laughs> kind of true. But um, yeah, it was definitely uh, it was definitely tough. But I did the first. So I started it in fall of 2020. And that okay. is when the pandemic was like pretty, oh, yeah. pretty serious at the time. So I, I feel like it was painful, obviously, just to be like on your computer for that long. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't doing anything socially really uh, anyways. So yeah. all things considered, I feel like timing wise, it was good because pretty much 2020 to 2021 to like summer of 2021, I feel like COVID yeah. was, was like raging. So, mm -hmm. so I was like, if I'm going to be at home anyways, like there's no... There's, 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 this is like Might a good well time to get a master's degree. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Awesome. How's it been for you? I guess, have you I been mean, working full time most of the yeah. time? So I did work full time most of the time. I took like six months to get used to my job first. And then mm -hmm. I started the program and it was tough. Like mainly COVID as well happened the same time. Yeah. So I, actually yeah. during COVID, it felt normal. Like, oh, we're just staying inside anyways. Just got to do homework yeah. at night. But um, definitely happy to be done with that. Just no weekend projects to do. Kind of just if I'm interested in something, you know, maybe work on it like an hour or two, but not like oh yeah, hours, like on a Saturday. I know, yeah. That, that was like yeah. hard. 
Yeah. But it's definitely. honestly, I like the program a lot. I think it was good. Uh, I did started out with machine learning and then I dropped out of graduate algorithms. So I switched to interactive intelligence. But I thought it was really cool just learning all that stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, okay. I mean, what classes did you really like during your time in the program? I think um, I think machine learning is was the one. It's like it's it's like though it is called machine learning, and it, and if you're trying to do the machine learning specialization, like I feel yeah. like that was the one that really that I really enjoyed, just because I feel like it you do explore like a lot of areas of machine learning, mm -hmm. and if anything, that's one where it's like uh, not too theoretical, where it's very much like you experiment yourself and you actually get to try try yeah. like working on a data set. And trying to, I guess, classify. In my case, I was trying to classify things. So, nice. um, yeah, I really like that one. I mean, nothing against the other classes where it's sometimes like feels more theoretical. But mm -hmm. especially with my undergrad, I felt like I had a lot of knowledge of like how things are supposed to work, but I didn't actually get to implement and use them. Whereas in the ML class, like at Georgia Tech, I was like, oh, I actually got to yeah try stuff out and have some results that I can analyze and stuff like that. Yeah. And you get to choose the data set, right? Like you can choose what yeah. projects you work on. I think that was actually fun to just browse yeah. all those data sets, see which ones were interesting and actually do yeah. it. Yeah, and I specifically chose ones too that like other people, I, I think they have, they had rules or something, right? Where like you can't uh, on what kind of, which data sets, but I specifically choose, chose ones that were like other people had kind of done. So like uh, I could okay. reference it if I needed to. Yeah. Something like that. So I didn't do like one that was like, totally uncharted yeah, territory. Yeah, true. It's scary when you're reading the specs and it's like you choose a data set and we're not going to tell you the future like everything you're going to do with it, but it needs to make it needs to have this many like rows or this many columns. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, "Oh crap, am I too is it not enough? Is it going to work? Like I just don't want to choose a data set, invest all that time in something that won't even work at the end of the class." Yeah, that was kind oh, of Oh yeah. Funny. Yeah, that would absolutely that would suck that would set like, you back so something. far. You'd have to like redo everything. So Okay, that's Definitely. a good that's a good advice. And then, are there any classes that if you could go back, like you would try to avoid? Yeah, I mean, I would probably. Um, so there are some classes that I took clearly just to get credits for. Like after, I mean, you know yeah. how it goes. Like yeah, you get totally. tired after a while. <laughs> so you take some where it's like I'm clearly just trying to get credits, and mm -hmm. I don't really necessarily care about like learning that much. And there are other ones where it's like you're really trying to learn a lot. And obviously get credits, but I did software development process, yeah. and that one was pretty. Um, that one was not as easy as uh -huh. some of the other classes where I only took it for credits and I didn't learn anything really. Yeah, um, I took it pretty much just because I was. I took it pretty early on, like so when I was like a new grad engineer, I guess at IBM, mm -hmm. and I was like, it's like, oh, my Git skills are not that good, and there was someone on my team at work that was like really good at Git. He was always yeah. like. <laughs> oh, if you have any good questions, let me know. And I would ask him a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm, now that I guess I've been working full time for like four years now, I realize that like nobody, it's like rare to have someone that's like really good at Git. And right. it's like totally fine just to Google Git <laughs> commands all the time. Yeah. So that was like the whole reason why I took the class. And then didn't, I, I feel like I didn't even really learn anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, for me, it was like ethics. I took because I just need the credits. And I mean, it's yeah. interesting, you know. Ethics is good. We should focus on that. But also, I was like mind numbing a bit. It was just like, oh yeah, I don't know, reading, yeah. reading, reading, and yeah. For that yeah. class, I feel like you could just read the audio book, or you could just listen to the audio book, or something when you're working out, yeah. and you get like almost the same yeah. takeaways. Yeah, exactly. So that was one class for me that I was like, oh, I'm just doing this for the credits. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Totally. Um. So you did machine learning. So are you happy with your machine learning specialization? And are, are there any like other specializations you were interested in or other kind of ideas like that? Yeah, I have a coworker that is on my like direct team and like we're on the same project and he's doing uh, the computing systems one. Okay. I think lots of times, I feel like a lot of people are between those two. And for my current role, computing systems would definitely be the most relevant to my current work. Yeah. So that's definitely mm -hmm. the one that I would do the most because like my current work is you know, with like the HPC note, just managing the HPC nodes basically, and having more knowledge of like the HPC architecture, yeah. um, I don't know, like CUDA programming and stuff like that would be uh -huh. useful. Whereas the ML specialization, I think 
I'm really glad I did it. And I don't, I still don't know if I'd, I, I still don't think I, I don't think I'd rather do computing systems, but that would be mm, the next one second. that I would consider. Yeah. Um, just because I think I want to move, I still eventually do want to move to more of an ML engineering role, but yeah, I'm totally cool with my current, mm-hmm. my current, my current position. So I'm not yeah. definitely not looking or anything like that. Yeah. Like my, I think I kind of have the same opinion because what I do is also pretty, it's networking. So, I mean, we work mm-hmm. in the operating system a lot and it'd be nice to have taken, you know, advanced operating systems, all these classes, because mm-hmm. I feel like I use that more day to day for my current. Class. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in Azure networking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in networking. So I do like Kubernetes networking and uh, mm-hmm. basically just making sure the pods, the containers can talk mm-hmm. to other things in Azure. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're always doing like debugging in the operating system. Well, just packet captures, everything kind of like that lower level stuff. Just like, yeah, I think for a lot of us in, in Azure that, um, so you're in Azure core still, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think for a lot of us in the Azure core computing systems, yeah, there's yeah. no way, there's no way it would be hurtful yeah. or anything. Right, yeah, but like, I think for a lot of us, it would help like just at a high level. I know that's but one I, class I, that I think I might take. Yeah. I get scared of I get scared of C though and it, the lower it, level crazy. languages. Yeah, yeah, I know it's like something I don't want to face, but in my job sometimes I have to. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should just embrace this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, so um, let's see. If you were to go back and like start over, you know, do the program brand new, knowing what you know now, like what advice would you give back to yourself? Well, uh, I already kind of hinted at, at it, but uh, some of the HPC classes yeah. that Georgia Tech has okay. would be definitely good to know because, I mean, even though you, you definitely like learn a lot on the job, but it's kind of like slower and, and I feel like it's not like the formal yeah. education with like, uh, with like a lot of the HPC architecture, it's been like I learned on the job, like I didn't know what the P- like PCIe means and just, I was just, I totally like started this job and working in like uh, on an HPC team, just mm-hmm. not having any knowledge about that at all. Cause before I was basically making web apps. So yeah. I think if I could go back, I'd probably try and do more, I guess more, a little bit more of the computing system classes and the yeah. ML classes. Um, okay. That's probably, probably what I'd do. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, Brian, that's all the questions I had, man. Um, Thanks for joining. Also, you have a channel, right, of doing like a bunch of videos for OMSGS. You know, yeah. like, you got a patent, right? You just did a patent. Yeah, yeah, I got a patent at it. IBM. Um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna plug my channel. It's just my name, though, Brian Trong. There we go. I'll, I'll link that. So I will link that. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> here, let me stop. Let me stop recording. Cool. Uh,